One of the biggest questions I get asked in my profession is how do I work with my guardian angel? We're going to answer that right now. Hello everybody, my name is Michelle Patterson and I'm the founder of Angel Souls. I am an angel medium and a spiritual practitioner. Today we're going to be talking about how to work with your guardian angels. People often think that they have to be in some sort of special state in order to contact their guardian angels. And although the ego can get in the way and make us overlook things, you know, if the angel is trying to talk to you or whatever, or, you know, talk to you maybe with repeating numbers and angel signs and all of that, yes, the ego can second guess that and shut it down and then we miss the message. Or if a message comes through, the third dimensional ego consciousness, density consciousness, being human, that message can hit there. Your guardian angels are typically thought to be fifth dimensional beings. It's going to hit your mind and you might start scrambling it, trying to interpret it, um, trying to make it mean something that they didn't intend <laughs> to come on through. That is the biggest reason why angels speak to us through especially number codes because we are a universe built on codes and we ourselves are built on codes. And so there's something that triggers in us. It's something that wakes us up when we see that. Now we want to be careful because again, the ego can just sort of get used, getting used to seeing repeating numbers and you read into it when there's nothing there, <laughs> right? I always use the example. I have, um, there's a hair salon that is down the road for me and they have 444 and their phone number. Now I know it's there. I drive it, you know, quite often that route and I see it all the time. So when I see the 444 and that number, I'm not you know, getting all like, ooh, there's a special message there. <laughs> no, there's nothing to read into it in that situation. But if you are, you know, you're just going about your day and you look over, you see 777, you might smile and go, okay. And then you go into the store and there's 777, $7.77 and, you know, all that. Now we're talking, your guardian angels are trying to get a message to you. There are other signs that angels will use. Often uh, you'll hear something in a song. You might see something in writing. Maybe you were just thinking it and then you hear it on the radio. I do that all the time. Or I'll hear it on the TV. I, I was just thinking something and then they say that same phrase. So I always have to stop and go, okay, what was I just thinking about? Or you might, this is Archangel Sandalfin <laughs> coming through. He's known as the Archangel of Music. But if you hear a song lyric, over and over and over and you might just think oh well you know just you know i was on social media that just got stuck in my head but if you stop and listen to the lyric it's giving you a message so this is how our guardian angels will typically communicate with us day to day and you don't have to be in any sort of special spiritual awareness you just need to be in the awareness that your mind could twist things all right now, if you want to go a little bit deeper, you really want to have a heart to heart with your guardian angels or even work with an archangel, then that's where you go into a deep meditation, do breath work. So if you want to go into a theta brainwave state, you could try the breathing of five counts in, hold for 10, exhale for 10. This is a stage right before you get to a sleep state. So it's often more effective if you are sitting up so you don't fall asleep. And I always tell people, if you're planning on doing a theta brainwave meditation, I wouldn't burn anything because you might slip into a sleep. Just use some rose water. You can get that in the beauty section of just about any store or, you know, you can use essential oils, rose, jasmine. You know, those are high frequency scents, so you can use that. You can use myrrh, uh, frankincense, angelica, any of those would work just fine. So when you go into that theta brainwave, you can open your heart, Okay, let the light come through you, imagine that, and ask your guardian angel to come forward. Or if you are working with archangels, ask an archangel to come forward and work with you and see what comes up. Now in this deeper state, we'll talk about an alpha uh, brainwave state as well, but in this deeper state, you're not so aware of your physical body around you and the mind isn't trying to create anything, okay? So a lot of people will come out of a meditation and say, nothing happened. That is so not true. <laughs> that is not true. The answers will come to you when you're doing the most mundane things. Once you come back into the beta, B 
being awake. So being in that deep meditation, just allow the experience to happen. Don't try to put anything on it. Don't try to strain to hear anything, all right? Just be in the experience and when you come out of it, you should have some sort of maybe feeling. You might still be hearing, you know, thoughts in your own head where it's like, you know, I should try this or I should try that. And it's not that they're controlling your thoughts. It's that you've taken the information and now your higher self is dealing with you in the physical, right? And that's how they kind of work together to bring a message forward. Now, if you are going to go in a more relaxed state, which is the alpha, it's not going as deep as theta, but the alpha brainwave, you can still meditate, obviously, but you're still gonna have thoughts flipping through and that's okay. There's no problem with that whatsoever. Just the connection, they can ping your heart, right? They can uh, communicate, as I say, and I guess it doesn't sound so fancy for spiritual people, but they really do communicate with us through our cells, okay? So it doesn't have to be just hearing or seeing or thinking or, you know, clairvoyance or whatever. All those, those are helpful. That doesn't have to completely define your experience when you're working with your guardian angels or any angels for that matter. It's more about opening the intention and saying, guardian angel, I would like your help. Okay, think of a, I always think of us as like, God's children, right? Think of a child who's like, no, 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 let me figure it out for myself. Okay, I can't figure it out for myself. Can you help me? That's kind of what the angels do for us. They'll stand back and let you try to figure it out on your own until you're really maybe lost or down or whatever, and then they'll come in and give you some guidance. But they are not here to live our lives for us, okay? They are not here to tell us what to do, you know, they can validate something that you already knew. Uh, so just be careful with practitioners who say that angels are predictive and they're gonna tell you your future. Um, no, angels are not fortune tellers. Uh, th no, <laughs> no. That's somebody who's trying to weave all the spiritual trends together to get more views or to get more clients or whatever. Um, angels, again, they guide. They will help you know like yes you're on the right path they'll tell you things that you already know and and kind of encourage you if it's the right path for you to go in that direction and to not doubt yourself all right or they'll give you something to think about and you open up and that leads you to some epiphany that you have for yourself they cannot interfere with human free will and fortune telling telling you your future being predictive is interfering with your human free will because it's planting a seed of suggestion and making you go towards one trajectory when there were several that you could have explored. So just be careful about that. Again, spirituality has become incredibly trendy and people are just in it for a popularity contest sometimes and they're trying to, you know, really convince people that they can do an angel reading with tarot cards, like a traditional tarot card deck. I have a, a blended deck here that has kind of, ooh, Nine of Raphael. <laughs> pulled that out. Make a wish. Dreams become reality. A joyful time of life. There you go. Um, but it, it has a different intention. There's a blending of, of the energies there. A traditional tarot deck, no, that's not the same energy. It's a fourth dimensional energy that you're tapping into. Angels are fifth dimensional and above. So again, coming back to, do you need to be intimidated by this process? No, just go to any meditation that I have on my channel here. If you prefer a different one, by all means, go ahead and do that. Get into uh, whatever frequency you want to get into. Again, I gave you the theta breathing. Uh, alpha breathing can be box breathing. In for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four, you know, doing that. Whatever works for you. All right, so get on into that. It's more about the intention that you set when you're going into it. If nothing else, just doing calm breathing, it's going to have a physiological effect on you. It's going to help you be calm, all right, peaceful, reduce the stress. That in turn will help you raise your frequency. So now you're not in this low space anymore when you're in a higher frequency. First of all, it's easier for you to understand what your angels are trying to show you in day-to-day -day life. You can get the ego out of the way so you can actually work towards something that is meant for you, not something that societally speaking, you're like, well, if I make it this or I do that or I make a lot of money, I have a big title, then that will 
have me making it in this world and now I'm a valuable human being. What angels teach you is that you are already valuable, beautiful, lovable as you are, no matter where you are in life, no matter what has happened. That's what they get you to understand. And you might, once you start meditating and working with your guardian angels and especially archangels, yeah, you might find that material things don't hold the same weight that they used to. And some people get a little rattled by that because they're like, I, I used to love shopping and now it doesn't hold the same spark for me. That's weird, <laughs> right? Or, you know, I used to love going and listening to really hard music and now I just... I think it's also called getting old, but <laughs> who am I to say such things? <laughs> but you know, your, your tastes might start to change. Um, I used to love to go out with my friends and dance. I was really into like, let's go to a lounge and just have conversation and get up and dance and do whatever. Um, and now, again, it's probably me just being older, but now I am much more interested in going out hiking or you know, just doing calmer activities. So be ready for that. Things will start to shift for you. Uh, you may not want to wear really structured clothing anymore. It's, it's, some of it can be very simplistic, but you'll start to notice, like, I, I just, I have a different perspective. And that is the beauty of working with your angels. But more than anything, in these very, very, very tough times, where we see the world shifting in a way that we don't understand, and it's really not really like shifting, shifting. It's just becoming like the problems that were already there are becoming more apparent. We are not to run away from those things. We are here to help elevate, right? So we elevate by looking at whatever's there, processing it. Yes, we're still human. We have to take physical action on things, you know, in a loving, kind way, whatever, you know, supporting an organization or something like that. But we also need a big measure of self-care. And doing meditation in and of itself is beautiful and very, very helpful. Meditating with your guardian angel is now even better. <laughs> right? And your guardian angel can help you feel at peace, to help you get back in touch with your soul, to help you be in alignment, to raise your frequency, and really to help you once you get through all the other stuff to help you realize what you really want to manifest. Not, you see the difference there? It's, it's, it's like your, your true intentions, your authentic self comes up and all of your old goals, you might start seeing, I just wanted that because I didn't feel good about myself. I just wanted to go down that career path because I wanted validation. I wanted to feel like the world saw me and saw value in me. And when you see value in yourself, you don't need those goals anymore and you set new ones the possibilities are endless when you're tapping into angelic energy again they're not here to do our work for us they are not here to grant permission I've seen this quite often too you know what do my angels have to say about me making this choice this choice this choice no 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 they're not here to tell you what to do <laughs> right if you are confused you might say angels what's holding me up here Angels, what do I need to discover? Help me get down that road so that I feel better about making a decision for myself. All right. So if you have any of the questions about meditating with angels, working with angels and archangels, leave your comments down below. And of course, thank you guys so much for liking and sharing and subscribing. It helps me out a ton and it helps other people see this information as well. I am sending you all so much love and take care.